Welcome to another edition of Fine Line Automation. Um, these are the, uh, this is the assembly for our new Z-axis for the revision for Z-axis for the kits. So, um, if you got a kit after Thanksgiving of 2011, uh, use this assembly video. Uh, if not, please refer to the previous assembly video for how to assemble your Z-axis. So the first thing that we need to do to get started is to take the 14B piece, so it's a 1530-14B piece for the 2x3 uh, the and the 3x3 three three kits. If you have a 2x4, 3x4, or 4x4, it'll be just the 1530-14. You're going to need a motor mount. And you're going to need two 5 16 dash 3 quarter inch socket head cap screws. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert the cap screws into the counterboard holes and we're going to find the extrusion side that's tapped. So uh, there will be two holes on one side that are tapped. And we're just going to insert this motor mount in here and uh, we're going to get it, uh, we're going to tighten these down finger tight. Be sure to use Loctite when you're tightening these nuts down. And we're just going to finish tightening them here with a quarter inch socket. So after you got this part done, you can set it aside. The step that we need to do is to assemble the bearing block assembly. So you should have a bearing block and what you're going to need is you're going to need the bearing block and a cover for the bearing block so um, it should be they should have come together and what you're going to do is you're going to put the cover over the bearing side and the little in uh, the little pocket in the cover is going to be facing down towards the bearing. Next you're going to take two quarter twenty by five eighth inch socket head cap screws and you're going to use them to secure the cover. Again, Loctite is preferred here. After you get them finger tight, we're just going to use a three eighth inch Allen wrench to tighten them down. So after we got the socket head cap screws tightened down, what we're going to do next is assemble the needle thrust bearing assemblies and the shaft collar. So you should have got your shaft adapter. Um, and what we're going to want to do is take a uh, needle thrust bearing assembly. So that consists of one needle one flat thrust washer and we're going to pop that down on the thing followed by the needle thrust bearing and we're going to push this down and then a flat thrust washer again on top of it so you got this stack here and what we're going to do is we're now going to slide this into the bearing block it should be a tight fit but it should slide easily into the bearing block Notice how the coupler and the bearing block sandwich the thrust assembly between them. We're going to take another thrust bearing assembly and put it on the other side. So again, you want to take your, your flat washer, your needle thrust bearing, and then a flat washer and put them all on that side. The final step to this assembly is to add the motor coupler. So take your helical motor coupler and put it on the uh, put it on the shaft and it should slide all the way up and it should sit and you should be able to sandwich the needle thrust bearing assembly on this side between the motor coupler and the bearing block. 
So now we're just going to set the, the bearing block assembly up on its end and we're going to push down on the motor coupler while we tighten the shaft coupler. So there, there's two the set screw and the screw to pinch the collar together take weird size Allen wrenches. You're going to need a 3 32nd inch Allen wrench to tighten the, um, the uh, regular screw here and we're going to tighten that first while we're putting pressure down on the motor coupler to help pinch everything together. It doesn't have to be a lot of pressure, it just has to be a light pressure. And there we go. Um, now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and tighten the set screw. I highly recommend that you back both of these screws out before you tighten them and put Loctite on them before you uh, tighten them down fully. It'll help uh, keep things from vibrating loose and when things vibrate loose, you're gonna lose steps and it's gonna be a lot of frustration. So now that we got this assembled, we're going to slide it onto our rail. And in order to slide it onto the rail, we're going to need two two inch carriage bolts and two 516-18 inch nylon lock nuts. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide the screws through the slots here, through the two holes that are on the top and the bottom and we're going to put the nuts on top here. Uh, we're gonna screw them finger tight. You don't need Loctite on these because the nylon in the nut will act as a uh, vibration resistant mechanism. So it performs the job of the Loctite. And then we're going to slide them on. Sometimes it's tricky to slide them on and you need the uh, you need to align the square of the carriage bolts with the T-slot. And when we slide it on, we're going to slide it all the way up. The uh, motor coupler should be towards the motor mount. And we're just going to slide it up here towards the, uh, uh, towards the coupler. And we're going to set it so that the uh, motor coupler is about a, a sixteenth of an inch inside the, the motor mount. Now we're just going to leave this freestanding for now because uh, we're going to tighten up it up after we get everything else on and we're going to use everything else to align this and keep it straight. The next step in the process is to attach the z-axis rail to the extrusion. So what we're going to need is the 4 by 10 inch z-axis rail that you have and we're going to need six three-quarter inch carriage bolts and six five eight 516-18 inch lock nuts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the rail up here on end and we're just going to stick the carriage bolts in one side and we're going to take our nuts and we're going to tighten them. And we're going to do this for all six bolts. So uh, you can pause the video here while we assemble. You don't need uh, Loctite for these or anything, just, uh, just finger tight. 